Montaigne is just right around the corner. And with the arrival of patch 4.0, we are expecting to see a tremendous amount of new content, from the brand new reveal of Fontaine, to exploring the vast bodies of water around the region, I am beyond excited to see what Fontaine has to offer for us. But there's one character in particular that has piqued my interest more than anyone else. And no, I'm not talking about that bunny penguin thing wandering around. I'm talking about the arrival of our new Hydro Archon, otherwise known as the God of Justice. And although we may not have met her just yet, there is still plenty of insight that we can gather from numerous characters and sources to hopefully help paint a better picture of just who we might be dealing with. And more importantly, we can finally answer some of the biggest questions, like is she dangerous? Is she waifu material? Does Raiden Shogun finally have competition for the best worst Archon? Well, I don't know about that last part. But either way, I am Sakai Samurai, your guide in the vast world to Vought, and it's time we begin a brand new series here on the channel to start prepping ourselves for the journey into Fontaine. With the first part starting with us getting to know and understand just who our new Archon is in the first place. So without any more distractions, let's jump in. The God of Justice is the current Hydro Archon, serving as a member of the Seven and is currently residing in the wondrous region of Fontaine. She is also a somewhat new leader, taking the throne after the fatal demise of their previous Hydro Archon in the past, the Lord of Amrita, who had perished at some point during the Great Cataclysm roughly 500 years ago. She is mentioned by Nahida to have a very interesting quote unquote personality as well as she can often be found having a seat at the many legal trials that take place in the nation while also noting that she doesn't actually have any true authority in most of the trials that take place besides maybe just some minor influence in the final decisions and outcomes of the event instead she's there because well she just enjoys being present and that she actually favors the tense atmosphere of the courtroom even though her words may seem innocent, some characters see her reasoning for appearing in the courtroom to be more self-righteous. With Dainsleith himself saying that the woman merely appears in these trials because she wishes to judge the gods herself, and that she relishes in the power of the courtroom. However, he is also quick to state that the god does know her boundaries, and ensures to avoid trying to make any sort of enemy with the divine itself. With that being said, there can be a lot to take in here. While Dane's Leaf can indeed be seen as secretive, and as well as he has his own interior motives, it's still worth it to point out that it could be possible that the God of Justice isn't as nice as she may seem to portray herself as. One reason in particular is the massive desertion of Oceanids from the region, with Oceanids fleeing in droves from Fontaine and completely cutting ties to the nation as a whole. With the reasoning behind this being their massive dislike for their new Archon. And while we may not have the entire story for their distrust just yet, we do know that they refuse to acknowledge the God of Justice as their true new Archon, as well as seeing her new ethics and rules as unjust, with nearly the entire species as a whole continuing to swear their devotion only to their past deceased Hydro Archon. In turn, leaving Fontaine and seeking refuge somewhere else in the world of Tavat, with a key character in his story being Rodea of Locke. And as a shameless shout out, if you want to learn even more about Oceanids and Rodea's vastly interesting life, feel free to check out my video on the world boss. I did a whole video talking about her lore and also why she now resides in Liwa, as well as going into a little bit more detail about how the Oceanids left Fontaine. So feel free to check the link in the description or in the link in the corner of the video. Anyways, back on topic, the God of Justice also has another name. And while we may not truly know if it is her true name or just another title, we do know that the god has also been called Falsalor or Focalor. Honestly, her name's pronunciation is somewhat confusing, as it seems that the English pronunciation could be using the French dialect where it is Falsalor, or it could use the traditional Latin pronunciation being Focalor. Oh, and the word Foca is also Latin for seal. 
which is adorable. So I'm going for Folklore. Finally, to wrap things up here, I'm going to be giving my own take on just how I'm really expecting the Archon to be like personality wise, as well as what we can really expect from Fontaine once we get there. Also, feel free to join me in the comments as well, as I would like to hear your opinions on the character. I believe that Fontaine overall is going to be a very advanced society, as what we have seen so far, and with the information that has been delivered to us by characters who have been to the land in the past. It is here that the land will most likely be highly regulated by the mighty arm of the law. And with these vast amounts of impressive machinery and inventions being seen in the trailer reveal, such as robots and steamboats, Fontaine could be a land that has, well, no room for traditional gods. As seen by our judge slash legal stylized Archon, and that the region could just be like Liwa, where they have just moved so far as a society away from needing the connection to their Archon. Or perhaps it could be the polar opposite here, with the fear of justice being associated with fearing their god herself. Either way, I have a feeling we're going to be feeling her divine justice at some point in the story. For the better or the worst, we are going to see the true side of just who is the god of justice or of Folklore herself. Anyways everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I make all sorts of Genshin related content here on my channel, mainly centering around lore and guides, and the occasional parody video from time to time. If any of this sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing, and if you like what you saw today, feel free to give me a like. And as always everyone, I shall see you all in the next video.